So, a couple of months back, Rode unveiled a huge selection of kit that they would be releasing this year. And the thing that got me most excited from the whole list was a mini version of the Rodecaster Pro 2 called the Rodecaster Duo. And the backpack, that, that looks pretty sick, not gonna lie. So it's not out just yet, but we have managed to get our hands on one. So we thought today in this video, we would compare it with the likes of its older sibling, the Rodecaster Pro 2, and its dad, the Rodecaster Pro. Dad? Granddad? I don't know. Anyway, let's find out if it's worth picking up. Thanks for checking out Radio.co on YouTube. If you want to see more kit reviews, live webinars, and handy broadcasting tips, then give us a thumbs up, hit subscribe, and click the bell icon. So it's been about a year since the launch of the Rodecaster Pro 2, and I think it's fair to say that we, we love it. Ever since then, if we want to use an XLR mic, like we're using right now in one of our videos, then we will use it to record, and it's an essential bit of kit, really. We would recommend this to any budding broadcaster or podcaster or whatever. If you want to start and you want the best of the best, we will always say go for the Rodecaster Pro 2. But we can't deny it's not cheap. It's £625 at the time of recording. That's a lot of money. That could get you a lot of stuff. You could get a train ticket from Manchester to London for that price. Wait, no, hold on. That's, that's probably more expensive, actually. Recession humour. So there's definitely an opening here for a cheaper Rodecaster and the Rodecaster Duo is a whole $130 less at $499. That sounds pretty good to me. So what are we losing here? Well, you'll be happy to learn that in terms of internal specs, absolutely nothing. You're still getting those ultra low noise, high gain revolution preamps, a built-in wireless receiver for connecting up to two Rode Series 4 transmitters, such as the Wireless Go 2 or the Wireless Me. You're getting that studio grade Aphex audio processing, which of course does include my favorite, Big Bottom. There's also that powerful high performance quad core audio engine, which we have always found to be perfect for our sort of audio needs. Although we don't really use the Rodecaster Pro 2 like completely to its potential. We probably only use one or two mics at a time. Um, so yeah. So the differences must really rely in the physical aspects, right? Well, yes and no. The superb 5.5 inch HD screen with haptic feedback is exactly the same. There's no changes there at all as is the two USB-C ports and the micro SD card slot as well. Even the knobs and buttons on the front are made exactly the same. There's also still Bluetooth for phone call integration built in and a 3.5 millimeter TRRS headphone output. I always struggle with TRRS. T-T-R-R-S. Just sounds wrong. Can we change that? So what in the dickens is different? Well, there is a few things. The first thing you'll probably notice is the faders. You got six physical faders and three virtual on the Rodecaster Pro 2, and there's only four physical and three virtual on the Duo. Now that's still a lot of faders. Um, I think, like I say, we'd be fine with that because we only really use two mics at a time. Uh, but I understand that some people might be a little bit disappointed with that. There's also reductions with the smart pads. Uh, there's only six uh, rather than eight that you got on the Pro 2, but you can still switch between them at the bottom. And I might be wrong, uh, but I believe there's still up to 60 pads um, if you flick between them at the bottom. So, I mean, I I don't think we've even managed to fill up eight. So yeah, that's brilliant. Speaking of virtual, another thing that has gone is the record button. Bro, you've gone too far this time. Now, all jokes aside, uh, the record button is now in uh, the top left of the screen uh, and works exactly the same. Like you press it down to pause, hold it down to record and stop recording. It's pretty much the same. It's now virtual. Uh, you may be wondering, uh, where's my show button gone? Don't worry. Uh, it's still there in the settings where it is on the Rodecaster Pro 2. So mm, not much of a change. Is that is that a deal breaker record button being gone? Uh, there's also only two headphone control knobs on the top, uh, as opposed to four, which makes sense because you only get two headphone slots in this one. Um, but yeah, in terms of changes there, nothing too outrageous. But there is one last difference that I think is the most crucial and that is that you only get two high quality Nutric XLR ports on the back rather than the four you got with the Brocaster Pro 2. Now this is the only thing that I could see realistically being a deal breaker for people because you could probably get past the virtual sliders and the virtual buttons but you can't create a virtual XLR port. You only get two and that's only two XLR mics. Of course, the other major difference is the size between the two. Obviously, there is a big difference there. So I made a, an unboxing video the other day, and if you'd like to check that out, you can click the link up here. But in that video, I said that I was speaking with Jamie about the Duo and saying how 
basically, I couldn't see how they made the Rodecaster Pro 2 smaller because I, in my head, it's already pretty small, especially when you compare it to oh, this mammoth, uh, the Rodecaster Pro, the, the original. Um, you put them side by side, and I mean, it, it's night and day, and it's also got this like, chunky stand. Hey you, yes you, did you know you can start your very own radio station right now for free? Yes, for free. Nice. Simply click the link in the corner to start your seven day free trial today. It's really quite heavy as well in comparison to, to both of these, but especially with the duo. So yeah, I, I couldn't see how they would make it even smaller. Now they have made it smaller. The payoff here is that you are losing out. With the Rodecaster to the Rodecaster Pro 2, you didn't lose out at all, really. The only thing you lost between the Pro 1 and Pro 2 is two faders, but they made up for that with the virtual faders that you didn't get with this one. But they made up for it in abundance with the amount of extra features you get with the Rodecaster Pro 2 and also the, the extra smart pads. Obviously, you only get eight on this one and you get so many on uh, the Pro 2. So, yeah, there was, there was a loss, but there was a gain. Here, there's no gain. You're not going to get anything new here. There's no reason to pick up the Duo over the Pro 2 if you have unlimited money. The only real reason I can see someone doing that, say if you're like the richest person in the world, is that it's smaller. So if you're having to carry it around a lot, um, it's going to be great because it's so light, it's so small, it'll fit in a backpack really easily. That's not to say the Pro 2 isn't easy to carry around. I can't say I've ever struggled. Um, but yeah, it does have that going for it. It does beg the question, is the original Rodecaster now redundant? Um, I don't think so. It's still cheaper than the Duo. It's $469 and you are getting four XLR ports. So if say you needed something cheaper than the Pro 2, um, but you needed more than two XLR ports, then yeah, you are going to get that here. Uh, so I think there is a place for it, but in terms of actually like quality and which one you should get, um, I probably would go for the Duo if you're not bothered about losing out on two XLR ports, just because you get that Apex processing, which is brilliant. So uh, let's switch over recording to the Duo uh, and see how it sounds. So I've now switched between the two. Um, I've not changed any processing or anything like that. It's exactly the same and the sound is the same. Um, as expected, the specs are the same between the two, so there shouldn't be a difference in sound. So in terms of actual use, uh, how is it? Pretty good. Um, the only thing that I struggled with was the record button, which I know I joked about, but I was just a bit flabbergasted. I, I kept looking for it and I couldn't find it. Um, that's something I, I would get over. And ultimately, if you've never had a Rodecaster Pro before, then that's not something you're going to worry about because it's just going to be second nature to go for the virtual record. Um, so yeah, I don't think that's really a criticism at all. Just a little bit of a strange thing that I noticed straight away. So if you're coming from the original Rodecaster, then getting rid of two XLR ports might be a bit of a hard pill to swallow, um, especially if you're working with a lot of inputs in a studio or something. But like I said, say you're a solo creator, you're working on your own in a bedroom or a small studio or something like that, and you're only using one or two mics, then there is no reason to go for the Rodecaster Pro 2 over this one. You're getting exactly the same specs, which I think is really impressive on Rode's part and I have to applaud them for that because they could have easily made a really cheap budget version of the Rodecaster which um, say, I don't know, it doesn't have Apex processing or, or the overall build of the Rodecaster just isn't as good. They haven't done that. They have essentially just shrunk it down even further than they did before and it's great. It works really well. And I would highly recommend this if you are just starting out. Uh, now, I get. I guess you could argue the other way as well. I guess you could say, well, I want a really, really cheap Rodecaster. And the current Rodecaster Pro 1 and this Duo is still too expensive for me. Why couldn't they make one with really cheap parts and no effects and all that sort of stuff? And yeah, I get that. But at the same time, there is other budget alternatives out there if you really, really, really want to go budget. And I'd say the whole thing that makes a Rodecaster a Rodecaster is the quality you're getting. And I'd encourage you to go maybe look secondhand if you're desperate to get yourselves a Rodecaster and it's just not quite in your budget because they do exist and they do go down quite cheap when they're on sale as well. So like all comparison videos I think I've ever made, I'm going to do my usual thing of saying that there isn't really a winner here. It strictly comes down to what you want. Um, if you just want two XLR ports and all the great features, go for the Duo. If you want four XLR ports with all the great features, go for the Rodecaster. 
However, if it's strictly budget you're working on, then obviously the Duo is the cheaper option there. Uh, the Rodecaster Pro 2 is more expensive, but say the Rodecaster Duo is in your price range, but you need the two extra XLR ports, then uh, the original Rodecaster Pro is still available and still great. I, I know I've knocked it a bit in terms of its design and its weight, but it's still really good. It was great up until the Pro 2 came out and then that just sort of made it redundant. But I'd love to know what you guys think in the comments below. Say maybe you've got a Rodecaster Pro 2 and you're thinking, hmm, I quite like the look of the Duo. Maybe I'm going to sell that and get the Duo instead. I'd love to know because I generally don't know what people are going to do here. So yeah, let me know down in the comments below. Uh, and like always, if you've enjoyed this video, make sure to hit like, click subscribe, ring the bell, all that good stuff. We really do appreciate it. But until next time, thank you very much for watching and happy broadcasting. And just before you go, have you ever thought about launching your very own internet radio station? Surprisingly, it's a lot easier than you may think, especially when you make the time to chat to myself or a member of the radio.co team. To do just that, head to our website, radio.co forward slash demo, where I can talk about your plans, any questions you may have, and you know, me and the team can really get you up to speed in launching your own internet radio station in literally minutes. It couldn't be easier. Why not check out some of our webinars, tutorials, help guides situated uh, around me? Or why not visit our website, radio.co, or even drop me an email, studio at radio.co. Until next time, take care and happy broadcasting.